Here we are with the F550. that I recently purchased about a week and a half ago. And uh, just wanna show you guys what I got and see what we got for $1,500. I thought it was a steal, so I went ahead and grabbed it. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. So got the bench seats right here. Got my headlight in here because I always use it. Center console, I mean, Everything in pretty decent shape. The dash is in decent shape. Uh, has a lot of miles on it. Let me get the keys out for you. I'll show you how many miles are on it. It's a Ho3 F550 with a six liter in it. It does fire right up, but let's see what it does for y'all. The stick shift manual. We'll get to that in a second. But uh when she fires up good. So mileage is 372. And I got it on this because I'm keeping track of my gas. Or my diesel, I should say. Put it back in gear. Uh, aftermarket radio, I had all these set and for some reason it reset. So don't know the issue with that. I know the radio has some kind of issue with the speakers. Sometimes it just doesn't work at all. Let's see what we got. See, right now is one of those times, no matter what I put it on, it's not gonna play music. So it's got something happening. AC doesn't work, it's not charged. Uh, he said if I top it off and recharge it, it'll be good to go. But, you know, got the old school cup holders. I keep my knife sharpener just for when I get bored. Uh, that works. Comes with this light. Let me show you. You plug it in here. You turn it on. And it's lit. I thought that was cool came with the truck reach in there turn it off and it goes off it does have different settings for the light i don't use it much i'm scared it's going to kill my batteries i had to put brand new batteries in it but they were under warranty so i got my money back so that was one thing i got my money back but for fifteen hundred dollars i mean you really can't complain if you're wondering what this is i was for a while and it is, oh, gotta get on the ground. It's been raining a whole bl full blown PTO. So we'll get under the truck. I'll show you guys under the truck here in a minute. Um, we're gonna check the diff fluids. We're gonna see what's going on with it. I bought it and I've had it for a week and a half. And since I bought it, I have not stopped until today. So it's a little rainy today and the phone's not ringing. Figured I'd show you guys a video. Let's pop the hood and see what's going on. Do got some rust on the hood. Overall, is in decent shape. Headlights need repolished, and the tabs are broken. But still, for fifteen hundred dollars, and I know the six liters have a bad reputation, but uh, I'll take it, man. Big tires on it, 19.5s. These are older, need to get those replaced. A uh, quick little suspension check. This scared the crap out of me when I first bought it, thinking I seriously thought the front end was gonna fall apart going down the road, but does run and drive. That rattles like hell, drives me nuts, but we'll get to that later on once uh, once we start fixing it up. She needs some TLC, she needs some love. But overall, man, good truck. 
take you guys on the passenger side here. I have cleaned it up and detailed it a little bit. It's not, you know, perfectly detailed, but overall, man, this leather's in good shape. I like it, man, manual. So the thing on the manual transmission is that it doesn't have third and fourth. It's got one, two, and five. And uh, that might sound crazy, but you can make it. And it's just one more thing we gotta fix, baby. We'll pull that out, figure out what's wrong with it. Maybe just do a full overhaul on it and get uh, Ben, the master transmission to help, master transmission guy to help us out on that. But um, came with a vice, came with this. And he said he used it to do U-joints with. Don't know if my seven way works. I know it's definitely just collecting water right now. I've got a bunch of dunnage back here. My jack stands are back here. Came with the diesel fuel tank and pump. So that's awesome. Don't need it, but uh, probably just gonna end up selling that. I got my jack stands up there and some more dunnage up there for blocking stuff. Um, give you guys a quick little truck tour. This, I just kind of keep all my fluids in here. I've kind of made this into my fluid cabinet slash bolt bin cabinet. Uh, right now this slides, so I don't really like that too much, but it's holding everything, everything that I carry with me, all my fluids and stuff. This thing does leak oil, so I keep some 1540. Once I pop the hood, you'll see what I'm saying. The next one is gonna be right here this side i don't keep much on uh, i got my vacuum pump that i just got so uh, my grinder my freaking milwaukee saws all my milwaukee battery powered what's it called uh i can't believe i forgot what it's called it's not a pole saw what am i thinking of bandsaw battery powered bandsaw that i never use Keep my fan clutch tools over here. Some random torques, some long torques. Uh, all my front end stuff, like my Pitman puller, uh, tie rod, just kind of like front end tools right here. Throw them up there. Big uh, Ford diesel dust seal installer. This is like, just kind of become my personal side. Keep my cooler. No drinks? Dang, no drinks right now. I threw a cooler in here and this for when it rains like today. If I had to be working, I could jump on the ground and not worry too much about getting wet. The other side is the side y'all are gonna wanna see, which has almost all of my tools in it. I still got some tools in my box over there that I keep at home, but anything I'm gonna pull up to the job with, anything I might need, it's gonna be on the passenger side over here. And it's where all my tools are. So in here, got all the Milwaukee stuff. It's hard for y'all to see, but my impacts right here, my 3 8 impact, here's my half inch impact, all my ratchets, my electric ratchets. I got a, I know y'all are gonna wanna see, I got a regular 3 8 I've had this since I started five years ago, six years ago, whatever it is. Here's another one that I got for the cheap. Here's my favorite one, which is my extended reach quarter inch. Pretty much any job I pull up to, I'm grabbing this one, this one, and I keep the 6.0 battery on it. I tape them because the bottoms of them fall off, they fall apart. I tape them as soon as I get them. This one still needs to be taped what it is though i'm sure all my milwaukee fanboys out there know that these split the case these milwaukee if y'all are watching that screw only seats into the upper case like maybe a, an eighth of an inch so this whole thing ends up splitting and cracking over time so that's why i tape them i electrical tape them straight out of the gate I need to electrical tape that one when I get done. Here's some more batteries. I just throw these down here because they don't fit up there. Um, keep y'all moving wrong, right to left here. 
Here's some, all my half inch extensions and three eighths spark plug stuff. Three eighths and half inch extensions right here. All my ratchets, snap on. This is, what is this? This is Proto. You guys ever heard of Proto? I got a Proto snap on ratchet. What is it with you guys and snap on? I got a bunch of snap on. I say one thing about a snap on ratchet breaking, which is this one. And you guys go off on me, man. I mean, it's, they're just tools. Here's another snap on. It's a $130 ratchet, and it's like the size of my hand. Three eighths from Icon. Had it for years, but it's good. Where's that? Where's that quarter inch that broke on me that y'all got mad about? <laughs> I called the snap on guy. He said he'll. He said he'll meet up with me. Look, sheer smooth off. But this is the long reach one, uh, or long handle, not long reach, but it, I do use it as a long reach application. But it just sheared off on me one day, man. Had a 12 millimeter Husky socket on there and it sheared off, but got some snap-on ratchets. My Probably my go-to ratchet is this one. I bought this one when I first started as a freaking tire guy. And it's still, I think I, he's put one head in it right there. And it was good to go. Got these. These are gear wrench. These are all my quarter inch extensions right here. I just keep them right here. I used to have a case for them and keep them organized, but now they just sit in this little slotted area right here. Here's all my little kind of everyday random stuff. This is kind of my everyday shelf right here. This is my everyday box. And this is my everyday shelf. Here's a little torch. For some reason, I'm always burning stuff. Here's my uh, stream light. I think going crazy, ain't it? But anyways, keep that charged. Here's my little flexible magnet. What else we got? Some flathead screwdrivers for usually for clips and stuff. Here's my other headlight in case that one dies. But I love the Cornwell headlights. They last really good. They're really bright. I got two of them for whenever one dies. Here's all my bigger wrenches. Um, not my biggest wrenches, but my biggest, the biggest wrench I'm going to need working on cars and trucks is this, honestly. Uh, ratcheting wrenches are from Gear Wrench. They work good. The only thing is, if you put too much pressure on these, the pin will break. And then you have to find someone to warranty it or just get a different one. Uh, Icon for my... 20 to 24 these work good i've been using them for years on alignments this is like a random wrench area look at this this is a, a random ass socket rail uh that holds standard sockets don't use them very much but still want it right there this is like all my crow's foot wrenches and actual crow's foot um let me say this right line wrenches crow's feet okay that's where i keep those a couple sets of allen heads standard and metric i went with what's the name bondus so i went with them amazon special but they had good reviews this is like stubby wrenches only and uh you know just kind of random wrenches area right here this is a 13 16 set I cut in half because I was upset one day. And now I have a stubby 13 16 21 millimeter. These are all my, see you guys think I, I hate Snap-on, but I actually own quite a bit of blue point and Snap-on um, ratcheting wrenches. And then my flank drive plus set, which goes from 10 to 19 or whatever. Some caliper hooks, they don't work on heavy duty applications at all, but they still work holding something up, random stuff. Uh, my jump box ends up getting pushed around in here. A lot of stuff gets, ends up getting pushed around in here. This needs to get moved to this top area. Here's this area right here, which is kind of my hutch type area. But this old box flips up. The hood strut, or not the hood strut, but the the strut that holds it up 
is not very strong. Sometimes it stays. All right, so if it when it doesn't stay, stand the wrench up right there. Keep a lot of small stuff right here, electrical, um, like my electrical connectors and wiring, um, zip ties, RTVs, all kinds of RTVs in here, smaller zip ties, AC O-rings, um, banjo bushings and all kinds of stuff. This top area holds my bigger pliers that don't fit in this area, which are my everyday pliers, which is right above that. See how that works? Nothing in here, because I want this thing to be able to shut all the time. This has my bigger stuff, like my longer radiator hose, uh, just my freaking little lady fingers, whatever you guys call them. What do you guys call these, lady fingers? Or do y'all call these just lineup bars? I call it a lineup bar, but sometimes I call it a lady finger. And sometimes I just call it a metal stick because I might just hit somebody. Uh, here's my hammers and more hand tools, scrapers and little clip tools and just an area for all the little stuff with handles, hammers, specialty tools. Uh, we can go through here. Here's a cheap fuel pressure tester that fits GMs. What's that? That's like a, I bought this as like a master cylinder bleeding kit few years ago it's got like all the fittings that you can allegedly it has all the fittings you can put these into a master cylinder if you've ever done a master cylinder you know what i'm talking about and then it's got a little <clears throat> nipple down here where you can put a hose on it and feed it back up into the reservoir long reach balancer puller from cornwell uh, what is this? Some of this stuff I don't know. This is a thread chasing kit. Cheap Chinese thread chasing kit. Oh, what does that mean, James? It means I don't break many bolts or mess them up. But you see how much this gets used. It's been there for me before when I needed it, but usually no. Uh, large, large Allen head sockets from Cornwell as well. I don't buy everything off the tool truck, but when I need it, I just go get it. I think this set was 40 bucks and you see the surface rust on it. I barely need it. It's mostly for when I need these bigger ones. I've got these over there in my socket drawer. Hold on, let me take y'all back to the socket drawer because I know. So that's all the wrenches. I don't got distracted, hold on. All right, here's all my sockets, okay? Big sockets, bigger 12 point axle nut sockets. This is from Astro Nomadic, if I'm not mistaken. Astro up to 39. Haven't used it much, but I think I have used it before. And even if I haven't used the socket, it makes a decent, you know, seal installer, stuff like that sometimes. Uh, call me Shade Tree, call me Redneck, I don't care. Um, this is Pittsburgh. You can call me cheap, but guess what? I've had this, this whole set for. I don't know, six years since I started. So it goes 13 to 24 is what you're gonna use on a on a regular day basis. Um, got the stubbies, the common stubbies next to it. I just took this rail and did what I could with it. 19, 21, 22, 24. Here's your half inch to three eighths adapter and here's your half inch to three quarter adapter. Some small random sockets right here, like a five millimeter hex, quarter inch. Here's an adapter. Here's another adapter that i bought two of i didn't realize i had one already i bought one um here's your oil pressure socket that fits on i know for sure it fits on most oil pressure switches especially five threes four eights stuff like that more adapters swivels half inch swivels these are icon 24 to you know whatever they start at i think it starts at 12 but uh these do break, I've had these for years, and here's what you do when it breaks. You don't have to have the whole set back at Harbor Freight, at least not my Harbor Freight, so I don't know what they're talking about, but it's a hand tool. If it breaks, man, they need to warranty it out. Now this one broke a few times on me, so guess what I did? I took it and threw it away, and I replaced it with a snap-on. That's what you do. This set was like $120, $130. Don't find your weak points and make it a little bit stronger. There's no need for all that to be snap on when you can just find your weak points. I think I broke the 18 too 
yeah i've broken this 18 once and i just took it up there and swapped it out man there's no it's no big deal now if you live far away from harbor freight or whatever you just want snap on do it i've bought plenty of it when i needed it here's a half inch snap on 12 point that i wanted you know and just buy it buy it as needed there's no reason to all these are matco but look this is from die hard this is from advanced auto parts i just replaced it it's been doing fine uh icon three eighths swivels which goes from 19 to 10 and notice the 10's missing okay that's the life we live these are blue this is a blue power set right here with a couple extra randoms uh blue power 15 millimeter quarter inch drive this is my go-to stuff blue power nothing wrong with it i think it was 130 dollars 140 bucks the only one i've lost obviously is my 10 millimeter but i found it it got replaced and i also lost my eight millimeter and luckily i had found this uh matco what is this this is yeah, matco eight millimeter and uh put that right there and the set's still good to go keep some electrical tape right here i always end up doing electrical diagnostics somehow um okay let's move the jump box back this is my everyday tray so when i pull up mobile setup the first thing i'm gonna do is go put this on your car why or I might put it out here because it's got gloves. It's got plenty of gloves, protect my hands. Y'all can call me a sissy, I don't care, whatever, but I got tired of my hands getting cut up and then they get infected and the, the scabs swell up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Straight pick, 90 pick, little prying tool, more prying tools, tire pressure tool, wash your hands. This is a stud installer from Lyle, I believe. Let me see who made this believe it's a lyle anyways i also use it a lot on brake jobs you know you'll put the rotor on take a lug nut put this over the stud in front of the rotor and just run a lug nut on there so i keep it close by for brake jobs tape measure because uh you know it's always a dick measuring contest around y'all just kidding just kidding youtube mechanics but i'll come set this up right on top of the car and I'm ready to go. I can I can pretty much take a lot of stuff apart just by having these little bit of tools and these little trays off Amazon. Here's another one that's full of more knickknack stuff, plugs, battery cables, I don't know, punches, drill bits, whatever. I'm not in here trying to look super cool, man. I'm here, I'm here to fix a car. Same thing with the snap-on stuff. I mean, does your customer really care if you bought snap-on or not? No, they care, did you fix their car? Now, if you need a snap on to fix, if you need a snap on to fix a car, they do make certain tools that only snap on tools can do that. But there's usually a workaround. Wait till you see this headache. Electrical box. This is how I die. This is what I bust out. If I know it's electrical, or if I'm chasing a short, or if I'm chasing something intermittent, or I want to see exactly what that sensor is getting, I got two of these kits because I had one for work and one for home when I didn't work for myself. Now I just ended up with two of them. Anyways, had to take a phone call. Little back probing kits, really good. They do work with my power probe, so I like that. What I usually end up doing is slipping this in the back, taking one of these and plugging this in so I have a little extension. Let me show you. It's hard to do it with two hands, with one hand. So now, say I'm back probed, and then this will come off, and I wish these leads were a little bit longer, corn well, but for 30 bucks, I couldn't beat it. And I'll, and I'll clip that to my power probe, and then we'll, uh, we'll be good to go. So, give me a sec. Uh, not the prettiest little box, though. I mean, you got your voltmeter test light. These Lyle test lights ain't worth a hundred dollars in my opinion i bought this it's supposed to be a three to 49 volt can you see that yeah right do not rely on that for a five volt reference it will not pick it up i don't know if it's not enough amperage to light up the led board or what but forget that this is a battery and charging system tester that's kind of all it can do is tell you 
how much voltage the battery currently has is the battery is it is the alternator charging these really ain't that great get do yourself a favor get yourself a five dollar test light from harbor freight and um use that for diagnosing things got my power probe in here this is here's your inline spark tester cool um this is a amp clamp and mostly i bought it because it had a lot of different attachments i liked this one where i could check for fuel pump current flow i can jump on here on a heavy on a heavy gauge wire and see what what it looks like when it's cranking got some leads stuff that i haven't really opened yet as you can see i've used it for what i needed it for but i got this for 30 bucks because somebody else bought the heavy duty uh multimeter that comes with it and they didn't want it so my guy cornwell my guy gary cornwell, hooked it up give me one second i'll put this away so lo and behold this video has turned into a truck tour as well we're still gonna get to the truck but i just want to give you guys a tour of what's going on toolbox setup i know you guys like to see organization and stuff like that so ride with me let's check out the rest of these tools so we already cut covered all these sockets this is more standard stuff uh mixed in here here's all my harbor freight snap on snap on i upgraded these because i kept breaking the harbor freight ones i ain't scared to break a harbor freight and replace it with a snap on but i ain't going straight to a snap on i think this was a hundred something dollars i think this was a hundred something dollars i grabbed a couple swivels and adapters and i walked out of there three four hundred dollars i couldn't believe it anyways random sockets right here my dad gave me this one it's a 15 16 thanks pops it's a snap on and uh he used to use it on heavy equipment sometimes he said he had to have it so he gave it to me random sockets that i bought from advance because i was unprepared that day and now i've got extra ones 12 point sockets that are like husky i don't even know what are they oh even better good old craftsman son but it's the old craftsman they're stout allen head sockets these are all snap on and i like the snap on allen head sockets I will say that I bought these Matco Torx bits when I first started and out of Snap-on, Matco or Cornwell Torx bits and Allen heads, cause to me, I think they make the metal out of the same, I think they make the bit out of the same metal. But uh, the Matcos, man, they twist. Look at this one, see it? Look at that one. That's a Cornwell that I've slipped in there because the Matco wasn't that great. The Matco's twist, man, over time. The Cornwells are stout. I promise you, the Cornwells are the way to go and for the Torx bits. Back here, I got a set of gear wrench e Torx. I think that was like 40 bucks on Amazon. It's a Lyle, um, not a tap driver. It is a tap driver. Uh, set of sockets, so. They work good. Like I said, don't use them much, but when I've needed them, they're there. Another more Pittsburgh uh, shallow half inch metric set right here. Works great. I slapped on the, what socket is this? Oh, what is this, a 20? Yeah, so the Icon set from over there even comes with a 20 that I just keep out of the way because you never, sometimes you need that 20, but no. And a 23 from Icon as well who uses them. The only time I ever needed a 20 was on a uh, big old uh, Dodge. And uh, the converter the converter bolts, the bolts that go through the flex plate to the converter are 20 millimeters. So that did come in handy and I beat the crap out of it. But uh, standard Matco set here that I bought when I was get, first getting started and I thought I needed them, don't need them, waste some money. Um, random sockets that are 12 point random sockets that were free these are standard standard random sockets that were free as well these are some big allen heads standard i believe yeah five eights so more stuff from my dad who used to do heavy equipment sometimes random sockets that i got more metric stuff these are really good for tight places if you can you can't put a lot of pressure on them i did break once again I broke my 15, so guess what I did? Put that snap on on there. Finish off your rail. There's that one, and then more snap on. Shallows, 3 8 
Only thing about this is it skips eight. It goes eight, 10, 12. It skips. It's like you're only your major, most common sizes, whatever. Impact driver lays here because some kid broke my freaking clip. It's all right. That's, that's what happens when you let people borrow your tools. AC uh, manifold gauges for diagnosing AC and seeing how the, the compressor's working and stuff like that. Is there a blockage? You can see what's going on. Um, front end service kit from OTC works pretty good. Keep it right there. Ball joint set from Maddox that was $60 on sale a few years ago from Harbor Freight. Guess what, snap on guys? I've made thousands of dollars doing ball joints and everything in it still works. I'm not gonna bust it out because it's just, I'm not getting everything out for y'all, but just trust me, it works. You'll get your different adapters and stuff if you need them, if you run into it, but it'll get you through there. I like the OEM tool set. I've used this O2 sensor socket set. So you know, this is a good test for it. O2 sensor socket set. This thing holds up great. We'll stuff that right there. A couple oil filter wrenches, like I do a million oil changes. Uh, my brake caliper tool works great bought it from matco a long time ago and it still works all right back up over here got a bluetooth speaker that needs to be charged i got my look at this i guess my i guess i'm learning i guess my box leaks water and it has ruined all of my invoices so that's news to me this morning but that's not good news so we'll throw that over there Y'all see I'm messing up my truck for y'all, right? I'm out here in the rain, so please hit that like and subscribe button. Cause I'm out here for y'all. All tail scanner. I'm gonna do a video on this all tail scanner because I'm not a fan. So maybe if, I, if my phone don't ring, I'll do that. This thing open. Genuinely not a fan of this. And we can cover that in a different video. Does not come with all the different adapters. Um, does not, it is not Bluetooth, it's just wired in. You think it'd be faster for that? It's not. Not happy with the Alto. I know you guys that do a lot of BMW and European stuff say it's great. Good for y'all. Not for somebody who works on a lot of Ford, Chevys and stuff like that. I prefer the Think Car. This is my launch scanner. That honestly, I prefer this over that. It's faster. I've had this for like four or five years and I bought it just as a general code reader, but it can read live data. It can graph some, da some data pids. It will graph it on here for you. I've diagnosed a lot of stuff with this and had a lot of accuracy. Just small, easy to deal with. The cord will fall apart. I hope you can fix that. If you can't fix that, you probably don't need it. that we'll put that back in there for you for the next guy kind of put stuff back where it needs to go can't believe that about my freaking invoice paper that means all this is going to get wet so i'm gonna i guess it already rained all this is dry so my box leaks dude where's the leak from Also up here, I keep my big breaker bar, my BFH, some shop towels, some brake clean, more gloves in stock, more invoices, uh, head gasket tester, coolant pressure tester, little kit that I got from Harbor Freight for whenever I'm resealing stuff. Let me see, I'll show you guys. Oh no, I don't wanna open it because it makes a mess. Anyways, Pittsburgh torque wrenches. Yeah, you can trust them. Trust me, you can trust them. I've, every time I use it, if I have a chance, I go to somebody with a Matco or a Snap-on and it still works. So these are about four years old, cheap, click type, old style, and they work great. I got the half inch and I got a quarter inch for, for the little ones. All you need, man, 60 bucks. If you want the Snap-on, if you're building a lot of engines, I will go with the Snap-on. If you're someone like me who does a head gasket here and there or a timing chain whenever it comes up, that's all you need. 
Love these. Got a video on these. These are this is the aluminum quick disconnect tool set from Lyle. And this is what I go to anytime I see something weird. And they work great. And you'll see this one's all beat up, right? Y'all know on the e-brakes, you use a 13 millimeter wrench or whatever, slap this on there and put some vice grips and it'll hold it and let you slide that parking brake for the Fords. Works really good for that. Okay, this is my Tecton little bit set right here. Really like it, keep it clean. Oh, I got one miss, of course my T20 is missing because somebody's blower motor floorboard already got it but got the whole set here for anything you're gonna need safety torques uh all the way down i mean really tiny bits if you ever needed them it's there so there's that what else we got what's this i don't know what this is right now Let's see what, oh this is my brake caliper kit also from harbor freight like I said, also from Harbor Freight, have used the crap out of it. It's all worn. I've even bent it somehow, I guess just from use. But there's that. Or the, the ones that spin in, rotate in, whatever. Harmonic balancer pulley puller from Cornwell. I got a lot of Cornwell. I'm not a super fan of Cornwell. It's just I'm good buddies with the guy. He gives me good deals. And he doesn't mind backing up his products when they fail. So here's that if y'all wanted to see a balancer puller. This is not the bolt style though. This is just for grabbing it and pulling it out. The bolt style is a different, different setup there. This is a on set that was given to me by a friend of mine it's a torx bit and allegedly a stubby allen head socket set the problem is this is from the 80s or whatever the problem is the bit is stubby but the housing for the bit i mean kind of defeated itself now when you get to these bigger ones but even these i mean yes it's stubby but look at that why but it's from like the 80s or the 90s so came with a couple triple squares that's cool came with all this has basically become my backup allen head socket set and torx you see there's some uh there's going to be one of them in here that's off but you see how rusty these are see that one that one's a mac co that he slipped in there this is a mac that he slipped in there snap on snap on I mostly just keep it because it was given to me and these are good backups. I should sell it. I should sell it, but I just can't. Here's my old Lyle quick disconnect tool set. Y'all know all about it, I'm sure. And this is a compression tester. A little basic compression tester uh, for gas engines. I mean, ain't much going on there. Here's the motor, here's the heart of where it all come, comes down to. And uh, had to put a, a new dipstick in it because the handle was broke off. Y'all probably seen it before where part of the plastic was still here. And bought a new dipstick, so let's check the oil in it. This is how I wipe the oil off. I just stick it in my arm too. I haven't checked the oil today, so I don't know. It does have a leak. We got a good amount of blood in us, so we got we got some blood in us. And here she is, oil filter right here. I haven't never taken it off. Here's a fuel filter. Y'all already know. Allegedly, this thing has been studded and EGR deleted. But uh, 
I don't know what that is. Got a little bit of, look at that wire. Chewed on right there, which is gonna go right here. So this wire has been chewed on a little bit. So that's good to know. Probably jump in here and fix that. But uh, if you look close, I don't know if y'all are gonna see it, but you see that firewall insulation is all oh crap i just i just broke that oh dang well it's a common thing for these things but none of the zip couple zip ties can't fix but look at that insulation oh that's not insulation that's rat hair look at that but some rat some rodent hair down here so i'd imagine we got some wires chewed up and stuff this boot don't look too great, but everything's in good shape. Now it does leak oil, and I'll show you that right now. All right, so we do have a, an oil leak. Let's jump down there and see what's going on. What do the brakes look like? Ooh, getting thin on the brakes. Let me see. But anyways, y'all know what low brakes look like, so. Here she is. Yes, she does leak. I've cleaned all this off, but look how black that drop is. Makes me wonder if it just leaks oil. This is water because it's been raining. Now, oil leaks. Let's talk about oil leaks. We got this one. We got this one. And it's all running down over here. Kind of makes me think oil cooler. Got my drain plug right here. I haven't even changed the oil on this thing. I haven't really done no work to it. I haven't really had a chance. And so uh, while I was down here, I observed we have that too. All this green, which means my evaporator is leaking. Uh, there's a PTO. There's a better shot at the PTO, which looks like this part's been replaced new where's that from it even says where it's from uh muncie can you guys see that muncie products muncie power products incorporated with a stamped in part number so that's good to know uh looks like they put on some new end links leaf springs in the front this thing rides like a boat, dude. Front axle. The ball joints look relatively new. We know we got the shock issue. Here it is, though, two wheel drive. Ugh. Now I'm gonna get back there and check uh, the, di the differential fluid, so let's go check that out. Now this being a bigger one, I don't know where the fill hole's gonna be, but I mean, look at this thing. This thing is massive, dude. Massive. Here, let's check. Let's check this U-joint. No play. A Little bit of a leak here though, if y'all can see that wetness, and that concerns me. See, that's that is a little drop right there on the bottom of that. So that does concern me. Rear brakes look decent. These leaf springs are just red, which is typically a sign of heat. Check these sway bar. Ugh. Let's see if I can find a fill hole for this differential. Lord, where's the fill hole? I wonder, I know on some of these, the actual bolt is the fill hole. So I wonder, but I wanna know, is this thing topped off right now? So we're gonna go look and keep trying to find a fill hole. These shocks got good bushings on them. 
they're not dead like the front one but they're wet so maybe i'll replace them as well because this thing you hit a bump and it just starts bouncing a little bit of play here but i think it's all right let me see you don't think so let me know down in the comments below, man. We got that tail shaft seal leaking. That's leaking right there. So that needs resealed, which we can do when we go in there. We'll do all of it at once. But this drive shaft feels okay. Sorry about the camera shaking. Here's my PTO hose coming off and it's just idle. I mean, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. So I don't know what they used to use it for, if it was for a Tommy gate. Uh, there's a hole cut in my bed right there. Don't know what that's for. Maybe they used the PTO for an air compressor. Um, yeah, just trying to look at everything while I'm right here, but big old exhaust, probably all the way it was when it came out of the factory. Ford says Ford right there. Y'all can't see it. It's all factory. Which is what I like to see. I don't know what he was talking about. He had an EGR to eat. You must not know, I know. Big old EGR valve sitting there. All right, let's jump here. Let's see if we can find this. Oh, there it is. There's the fill hole, baby. So I'm gonna go get a half inch ratchet and we'll see if that's full or not. All right, I'm down here. Y'all probably might not can't see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm popping this plug out. Ah, dang, somebody got it. tight. Please be full of fluid. Please, 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 please. Please be full of fluid. Nothing. Okay, we got some down there. We got some, but it ain't full. It's about this far down, so. She's pretty low, so we're gonna have to get that filled up because I don't want to replace this huge rear end. I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't want to replace nothing on it. So I'm going to get that topped off today. Especially since you see there ain't no bolts back here on this. There ain't, this cover's welded on. So the service, you would be, it would be out the front. So it's probably an expensive repair. I'll leave it like that. You know, we need to add some uh, differential fluid. I don't even know what it takes probably. Uh, 75 145 full synthetic I have no clue but we're gonna put some fluid in there probably some 80 90 for right now until I get it dr fully drained and serviced but been curious what's back there because I've been driving it for a week and a half and I don't know I know it's leaking I don't know is it underfilled or what but I definitely don't want the opinion bearing going without lubrication too long Okay, that kind of wraps up the brakes, the suspension, the tires, um, the fluids. It's got cooling and stuff like that. Y'all probably don't care about that. The air filter, I mean, I ain't pulling this air filter out. Not this style. It's full of brake fluid. It runs, it drives. It's got an oil leak. Some kind of animal has gotten in here and chewed up some of the wires, which is fine. We can, we can address that. It's not fine, but we can address it when it's an issue but uh other than that man stock truck this looks like a newer radiator um yeah man just a good old work truck headlights are a little messed up slightly slightly messed up here slightly messed up here on the headlights uh thanks joe ripping off my zip ties the other day but yeah it just seems like they've broken the mounts or whatever 
Everything's stock on it though, man. Looks good. I'm happy with it. Runs good. Needs some work. Needs a glow plug module and a har and harness on both sides. But man, you got to be happy with it. For fifteen hundred dollars, you can't you can't buy a better work truck. I mean, even if I just wanted to buy this for fifteen hundred and and flip the bed, I could I could flip that. So I don't plan on doing that. Plan on using it and abusing it, kind of like I already have. But here's my cap, which really feels like it needs to be replaced. Just don't feel right. Something wrong with this cap. Just look how it goes on. Okay, leave that alone. What's this for? Oh, this is for my clutch. Okay. Oh, it's breaking. There we go. Do we got fluid in here? Oh, we got plenty of fluid in here. Awesome. Too much, really. I mean, what does this say? Fill to step without with dot three brake full. Okay, cool. So there's the truck, man. Y'all tell me what y'all think. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, I got a, I got a, the Explorer. I still got to do two, but um, oh. Let's scan this. Let's see what kind of codes we got on the scanner. So y'all can see what I'm talking about. All right. This is why I don't like the scanner. I'm going to do a video on it. Right. Scoot this back some. There's a few things off the, off the top that I just don't like about this scanner. Get plugged in here. It's going to take a minute because this thing ain't charged. And I haven't bought this. Uh, one of my dealers is nice enough to let me test drive it. And uh, I ended up ordering a Think Car S8. And we'll get this one set up here and get the keys turned on. Check engine light, glow plugs. See, my glow plugs are working right now. Sometimes they don't. There's your radio working randomly. I'm glad y'all seen it at the beginning because sometimes it don't work. Let me get this fired up. Not charged, it does take a while for it to come on and wake up. So here's a little preview on the Altel in case y'all are curious, wanna be Altel boys. Maxi check is initializing data. All right. Let me get in the shade here so there's no glare. Sorry for the glare. All right. Diagnosis. Let's go automatic. This is the automatic button. Auto detect. This is what I have an issue with. So far, it's kind of smooth and fast. And it just has a it struggles with the auto detect. I don't know if there's something wrong with this one that I got or if this is how they are. I don't want it. This, this is already taking too long. And I'm going to show you why. This is way too long. You know what? I'm going to skip this and we're going to do this all on the all tail video forward. I can already tell you now, here's one thing I don't like about it. You got to enter a repair number. If you enter a number that you already did, it's going to tell you the repair order has already been used. Okay. Whatever. So you got to come up with a weird number that it doesn't know. Now you can go. I'm gonna get straight to pulling the codes. Manual selection, it's a Ford. Dang, this glare is killing me. I'm trying to get rid of that glare for y'all. Ah, uh, not a fan. Not a fan of how glossy the screen is. Here we go. Go over here, 
We're F Series Super Duty. We are 6 0. We're 0 3. Yes. Only way this thing will pull codes is if I manually enter it. And that's on a lot of them manual. Ask you a million questions that Snap on won't ask you, Think Car doesn't ask you. Then it makes you put manually enter the VIN. Let me put the VIN in. Okay, so I got the VIN in. If you don't put the VIN in, this thing will not work. So, diagnosis, go here, PCM. Read codes, continuous, we're on. And we got some codes here. EGR code, insufficient flow, valve position, control performance, circuit low, power inter interruption for keep alive memory, glow plug control module, number four, number five glow plugs, and glow plug control module communication fault. So that's what codes this truck came with. Honestly, I live in Florida. I ain't too worried about the glow plugs, except that I just maybe want my truck to work optimally so i'll probably end up going and fixing them just to get rid of the codes just because i'm like that but um overall for fifteen hundred dollars you can't beat the truck man so yeah it needs some tlc yeah it needs some work got an oil leak it's a work truck it's missing some gears but you can still go one two five you guys want me to show you one two five i ain't even gonna try it because I, I don't have the gopro and everything but it does make it and uh yeah man hit that like and subscribe button if you guys like watching stuff like this maybe i'll do some more service truck uh truck tours because i know a lot of guys have got truck tours but uh hit that like and subscribe button i appreciate it you guys and uh until next time you guys take care god bless